Although GitHub is by far the most used Git repo out there, it's definitely not the cheapest when you're talking about private storage. When you have a lot of projects that you're doing and you don't want to share it publicly, I believe that Google's source repository is probably the cheapest option out there. Luckily with Google Cloud Platform, we really don't have to choose. We can pick either GitHub or the source repository for GCP itself. And I'm gonna walk through both examples of this and just show you how a single project could actually be used across both and use two different triggers. We're gonna get started with a GitHub example. You can find this example at HMPL. I put two tags on this repository. So once you clone the actual repository, we're gonna go ahead and list out the tags and then we'll take a, a good look at the lesson two initial. This was a leftover from our hello world example and let if you want to take a look at this, you can open up Visual Studio Code just by typing the code command and dot for the directory that we're looking in. If you take a look, you can see in the Firebase config that there's actually the lesson one details and it still has the, the public information where we're going to publish it out to. And here's your hello world. Because I'm in an org space, this might look a little different. Um, you can see here Asia PLC, but you still click new and then you can name your own repository. And this will be what you continue with for the example moving forward. We'll pull out the remote origin from the original and move it over to the current one that you created. So go ahead and put git remote remove origin and that'll remove the current one that we're in. And then the command after this is actually listed in your git repository for the third option. git push dash u origin master. We're able to go back to the GitHub site that you created, refresh, and you should see the example code that is in the new repository. At this point, what you can do is go ahead and open up the cloud console on Google Cloud. You should still see a project out here from our original session. If you don't, go ahead and click the drop down. This might be empty, but you can switch your organization and find the project that we were working on for lesson one. If you go down, you can find an option for cloud build. And what we're going to do next is add a trigger. This trigger will be of the type GitHub because that's what we're working at this time. What we're going to do is actually hook into our GitHub account using OAuth authorization. And if you're like me and need an organization access, please click that button. It seems a little broken, but it works. Um, so I'll scroll down within my organization and look for this show and tell example that we're working on right now. And at that point, it'll kick me over into my trigger screen. What I wanna do in here is actually just name this trigger. Ours is gonna be very generic, so anything that you check in, it'll do a continuous integration. Um, go ahead and look up like Git flow so that you can correct this a little further. And what that's gonna offer you is uh, a develop branch typically to uh, trigger from. So our cloud build.yaml is what's gonna trigger this flow. And of course, don't forget your Firebase token. This is very important. I put it in here, but it's part of that login CI for Firebase. Um, the code from that that you'll copy for the token is going to be listed here. Go ahead and click Create Trigger. That's going to bring you back out to that main screen, and you should see your trigger at this point, and it will be listed with a GitHub uh, token to the right of it. You can go ahead and start adding the Docker files uh, folder in your main directory. And below that, I usually name mine Firebase so I don't lose track of it because you can create multiple Docker files. You can grab the Docker file code from agmp.com website or go ahead and grab it out of the Git repo itself. You can just paste it on in here. It won't change for your project as all we're doing is building a Firebase image and then providing an entry point so that we can call it. Once we add the cloud build.yaml file, we're going to put the same code from the GitHub repo or this. The first step in the cloud build is actually to use Docker to build a new Firebase image. The next step after that will use that image to deploy to Firebase using your Firebase token that you generated using your local Firebase CLI. Now we're going to commit these files. As you can see here, there's only a single remote at this point. We don't have our Google in here, so it's just GitHub. And we're gonna let that push up to the read. Go ahead and jump over to 
console.cloud.google.com and you can go to the cloud build history and we should be able to see this repo trigger actually start our build running. Now in our project, we're gonna add Google Cloud Source Repository. Once you're in the source repository, go ahead and create a new one. And then you're gonna pick your project that we've been working on. Yours is probably lesson two. I apologize if I keep jumping around on the name a little bit. You can actually host any new repo under any project that you want. We can now go in and we're gonna push because we already have our repository from GitHub. We're gonna run the init command as well as adding this repository to our remote. Now we can add a new trigger. This is gonna be a GCP type of trigger from our source cloud, cloud repository. Go ahead and choose the project that we're working on. And then you can name it. I named this one GCP so that we understood where it was coming from. It's gonna be the same setup as our original GitHub you can see that the new trigger is added to the bottom of the list here, and it's ready for a push from this source code repository. The last command that we have to run is git push dash dash all Google. We had to specify Google so it knew which remote that this would be pushing to. For those of you that like using VS Code's git tools, you can also do push to and then select Google and then push. If we go back over to our history page, we can actually see that GCP has done its work at this point. It's triggered it, and we're looking at the log files. There's two steps, remember. One is for the Docker side, and one is for the Firebase deploy side. You may have noticed that I keep getting failures. That's because I don't like leaving my token out in the videos. It's very important to protect those tokens. They're basically like passwords into your project. If everything went well, you should see a new deployment in your Firebase hosting. Don't forget it's at whatever lesson is set in your Firebase configuration. Please check out hmp.com and scroll down to join the Slack community. You could be one of the first ones to start helping out the community to grow and get the message out there about GCP, Firebase, and anything really web related. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe below so that AJ can keep on programming.